Vanakam, Namaste and blessings to everyone. This is Dr. Bhairavi Bala Subramanian, PhD, the Sky Priestess. Truthfully, this Virgo full moon is very, very unusual. I'm going to let you read the snippet or write-up that accompanies this video for some of the astrological factors as to why as I want to get more so into the energy behind all of this. To understand this Virgo moon, I first had to drop my expectations of what it ought to feel like or the script of what Virgo tells me it should feel like. And I just had to dive into the energy. And I didn't know why. I just kind of went with it. I'd been having a fairly rough day. But despite that, I felt this sense of unassailable optimism and the ability to heal and transmute energy in ways that I haven't done in a long time and certainly not with the ease that I'm doing it right now. And I thought to myself, hey, something's happening. So I looked at the astrology after I did my spiritual work and my prayers and then I found the reason. To understand this full moon at zero degrees Virgo, conjunct Regulus, the fixed star, the heart of the lion, we need to look back at the past. I mean, specifically, we need to look back at the Virgo new moon in September 2018. That was a watershed time for me as I was in the Himalayas and I was uh, meditating whilst flying over Everest. That was a big deal. And uh, many events in my, in my life took place then which have changed my life since and my perception of reality. But I didn't really see the two as so connected as I do right now. Back then, especially we were to look at this from a collective perspective because, you know, it's not just about me, it's about everybody. We saw many alignments that would actually pave the way for a different kind of spiritual experience, a different kind of spiritual healing and a level of healing which would not have been as accessible to all of us before. Reason being, the sun and moon were conjunct in Virgo, new moon, and they were opposing Neptune at 15 degrees Pisces. And so with this new moon Neptune opposition, the seeds of whatever happened then uh, were actually designed to help us open the doorway to completely different levels and depths of psychic healing and intuition and, and spiritual openings. We couldn't predict exactly how that was going to manifest and unfold. And it just seems like we've been so busy dealing with other stuff like Uranus at 29 Aries, Chiron was at 29 Pisces, now it's in Aries, that, you know, we may, I at the very least, just didn't think about this alignment after that happened. But to me, it just seems like so much of the debris is cleared and the curtains have kind of been lifted and I'm being shown ways to heal and align with energy that just simplifies so much of it. It simplifies my energy and my relationship with the Virgo archetype. It simplifies my energy and relationship to what I think is possible. In fact, realizing that healing is limited by my mind's idea of what healing is and that to actually go into a space of pure energy, I need to let go of that in the first place. And again, none of this is new stuff. It's just this is what the collective is currently dealing with. I, I'm struggling to, to find the words because the energy that's coming through just doesn't have words. And the moment you try to label it, bottle it, it loses its essence. The best way I can describe it is that there is this really tangible feeling of a network, like a, like a golden river of healing available to all of us, to everything that exists on this planet. It's just moving around all of us completely. And even though we are faced with so many different challenges and trials, seemingly insurmountable trials and tragedies in the 3D, it just seems like you want to call it God, you want to call it Goddess, you want to call it Spirit, it's up to you, but it just seems like there is a gift that all of us now have access to if we simply allow ourselves to attune to it, and that's the best way I can say it. Now, you're not going to get this from a conventional reading of the astrology of this particular moon because, again, a, you've got to look back to the to the new moon earlier, and B, Chiron in Aries is already changing our terrain and language of healing. So it's like, yeah, there is just something that is so beautiful and indescribable, and I just have so much gratitude experiencing this energy and being able to, I guess, do my best to, to express it to others. I just am feeling this infinite gratitude and this infinite 
people that call it joy. I'm not sure if I'd call it joy. Just this life-affirming energy that is present just everywhere right now. And again, I'm not saying this because I had a happy-go-lucky kind of day. I had the opposite. But through everything, there is this grace. There is this gratitude. There are these these hidden rivulets of energy streaming and helping us find solutions in ways that we didn't expect, that we didn't know, that we could never anticipate. And I know I sound like a total optimist right now. I'm a Capricorn. I don't usually do this, but that's exactly what it feels like. It's see, this moon is making me just, it's not even belief. It's just, it's not even the word no. It's just miracles are very possible with this energy. That's the best way I can put it. This is that that pure source manifestation energy coming through. And the best advice I can give anyone right now dealing with whatever they're dealing with it's in their life is to trust that it is there and to allow it to fill your life and to transform you in the ways that you need to be transformed because we're not going to be able to access this energy if we are holding on to parts of ourselves, ideas of who we are, ideas of what we can or can't do, ideas of this, ideas of that. As long as our mind is in touch, we're not going to be able to touch this. For me, at the very least, it's more centered in the heart, uh, to some extent in the womb and the dantian. Um, but really, I can't locate it in any one part of me. It's just all of me is aligning to this beautiful expression of source energy coming through. Again, not what I expected to be writing or saying with the Virgo um, full moon. I mean, even if we were to look at the sidereal system, it doesn't exactly feel like a Leo moon to me either. It just, this is above and beyond. And in some sense, we've got to put away those old scripts that say, this is what you do, this is how you do this, this is how you're supposed to work with this, because we are actually tangibly rising in consciousness and frequency that these old scripts need to go and i've written this on my blog as well at some point astrology will and should cease to work because as multi-dimensional beings of light in flesh we should no longer be bound to the karma of the planets but that is a collective process i mean that's one of the reasons why i do astrology is to help people get out of that system but you know that's a different story i i guess i'm just speaking to <laughs> More so to just let this energy express itself the way it wants to. But all I can just see is this beautiful golden light. And it's, I can't even say it's warm. I can't say it's cold. I, I can't describe it. It's just everywhere. And it's doing beautiful things. That's as much as I can say. So I hope you have found this useful. At the very least, feel the energy that is coming through and trust that it is also present in your own life. And that's as best I can express this. So, yeah, enjoy it and make beautiful things happen. The more beauty, the more joy, the more hope, the more gratitude you have in your life, you can then share that with others. And uh, that's how we light up the planet. So, that's about it. Bye.